Hallmark Charlotte Greenwood Show. <laughs> Gentlemen, Charlotte Greenwood is brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark greeting cards to remind you that every time you want to remember someone, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So when you choose a card, look on the back for the three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Yes, don't forget a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And here's our star, that lovable lady of stage, screen, and radio, Charlotte Greenwood. When Charlotte undertook the care of the Barton children, she did so with an open mind. But now she's about reached the point where she feels like closing it for repairs. For life in the Barton household has thrown her more curves than you'll find in a bathing beauty contest. Today she got another joke. As our story begins, it's Saturday morning. In the living room, Jack Barton was right in the left. Dear Janet, if you think you can put anything over on me... Oh, no. Let's see now. Um, oh, here you are, Jack. Say, Aunt Charlotte, are you any good at writing letters? I just haven't got the, well, you know, the touch. I think skill at letter writing is relative. Yeah? The closer the relative, the harder the touch. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't mean, well, it, it's just not that kind of a letter. It's, oh, I don't know. When a man woos a woman, he woos woe. Woos who? Woos woe, woos woe. Would you mind changing the needle and playing that again? You don't get it. it. It simply... Well, running after a girl simply means trouble. Well, there's no trouble running after a girl. The trouble starts when you catch her. <laughs> you can say that again. When I started going with Janet, I had a bank balance of $16. Now my balance is down to 7 bucks. Well, love makes the world go round. If it goes around fast enough, you're bound to lose your balance. This is serious, Aunt Charlotte. I I'm breaking off our engagement. Well... Oh, this is news. I didn't even know that you and Janet were engaged. Well, of course we are. Janet promised to marry me as soon as I made my fortune. That isn't an engagement. That's an option. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it's off. I'm going to write her a plenty hot letter. I'm going to say, Dear Janet, who is a frivolous trifler? Who breaks dates? Who is just a two-timer? Yours truly, Jack Barton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, Jack, what's all this about? I just told you. After all the money I've spent on her face. In beauty shops? No, in soda fountains. <laughs> and then what happens? She throws me over. Well, don't get excited. You know how badly a girl throws. I mean she breaks a regular Friday night date with me to go out with some other fellow. With whom? I don't know who he is, but Howard Marlowe told me he saw Janet with some fellow at the movies last night. Oh, well, I wouldn't pay too much attention to rumors. You know, it's a good plan to believe only half of what you hear. And be very sure it's the right half. And this isn't any rumor. I tell you, Howard Marlowe saw it. Yeah, Howard wouldn't lie about it. Jack, you like Janet, don't you? Now, be honest. Well, well, sure. Until this happened, I thought she was swell. But when she stands me up for somebody else, that's the end. Man has his pride, well, you know. call her up and get her side of the story. I can't call her up. I'm not speaking to her. I'm never going to speak to Janet again. Oh, now, don't be too sure about that. Things change, you know. The only thing that doesn't is a private's opinion of a second lieutenant. <laughs> Good morning, Charlotte. Uh, may I come in? Why, Mr. Anderson, of course. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Hiya, Jack. Uh, Barbara told me you were here in the living room. I uh, <laughs> hope I'm not intruding. No. Hey, has Barbara gone yet? I don't know. She left me in the front door just a second ago. Well, maybe she can help me with this letter. Hey, Bab! Oh, Bab! Say, um, Charlotte, I, uh, <laughs> I find myself in a quandary. 
Oh, that's wonderful. What days do you deliver? Is... <laughs> deliver what? I, I said I was in a quandary. Oh, I thought you said laundry. <laughs> oh, no, no, Charlotte. Quandary, not laundry. A quandary is, uh, is something that's uh, uh, mixed up and, and, and uncertain. Mm-hmm. They both sound like the same thing to me. It... No, no, no. Look, what I mean is I, I, I'm in a spot. I, I, I need some help. Now, look, you're a famous actress from Hollywood. Now, how would you like to go back on the stage? No, well, that's a pretty rough trip. I haven't traveled that way since the days of the Pony Express. <laughs> oh, Charlotte, will, will you stop with that kidding? I'm in a hurry, Charlotte. All right, come to the point. Well, it's like this. Uh, the press club is putting on a show tonight, and I volunteered to take a part in it. <laughs> I, I, I've been rehearsing for three weeks, uh, working like a horse. Hmm. I must hear you whinny sometimes. Well, uh, <laughs> what part do you play? Well, the hero, of course. Oh, yeah, it's a little love scene. And now, this morning, the young lady who plays the supporting role walked out. Well, couldn't you put the show off? Not at this late date. The show must go on. Oh. Yeah, everybody's been invited. We've got to run the curtain up at eight thirty tonight. So, uh, well, uh, I've been wondering if you'd help. I've got to have support. I don't know now. Now, Charlotte, I... I'm depending on you. Well, the show goes on at 8.30 tonight. I wouldn't have time to learn the line. Oh, sure you would. You're only in one short scene. I brought you the script so you can look it over. Here, it's, it's This Year's Wheat by D.H. Johnson and John Eugene Hasty. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. This Year's Wheat. Yeah, turn to page 29 where it says, Ah, my love, arise, arise. The crimson dawn is in the sky. This Year's Wheat, huh? <laughs> Sounds more like last year's corn. <laughs> oh, 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 there's the scene. Now, you play the part of uh, Melba. Oh, yes, I see here, Melba. Mm-hmm. Gay, madcap, lighthearted, laughing Melba. Sister, the the toast, toast of the town. You no! Know, <laughs> Melba plays with fire, but emerges on scrape. On scrape, on scrape. Oh, yeah, come on, try a few lines. Well, all right, give me my cue. Ah, oh, my love, arise, arise. The crimson dawn is in the sky. But hark, who calls from below in the garden? His eyes. His who? Tizinski. Tizinski. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a Russian. Go ahead. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, my beloved, it is indeed you, so young, so strong, so full of grass. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, it says grass here. The next word is noodles. Noodles? That, that's needless. Oh. Those are typographical errors. Now, now go on, read it, will you? Ah, my beloved, it is indeed you, so young, so strong, so full of typographical errors. <laughs> oh, Charlotte. Will you quit? Honest, this is a very important thing with me. All right, I'll give you my word. From now on, I'll be serious. Oh, well, okay. Well, then I say, ah, Melba, my own. Hear my plea. It's you I love and you alone. Fly with me. We'll be married before another day is passed. Anne. Uh, Anne. Oh, hello there, Barbara. How do you do, Mr. Anderson? Aunt Charlotte, did Jack leave his dictionary in here? I want to look up a word. No, I don't think... Oh, yes, there it is. Well, can I help you, Barbara? I'm pretty good at words. I have no doubt of that. But I'll look up my own word. With her. Oh, she's probably put out with Jack. You know, he isn't speaking to Janet Gregory at the moment, and Janet is Barbara's best friend. It's an awkward situation all around. Yeah. <laughs> well, kids certainly can get themselves in a tangle, can't they? <laughs> they certainly can. We should be glad, Mr. Anderson, that you and I have passed that age. <laughs> <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> on the other side of the door. But why would Mr. Anderson be making love to Aunt Charlotte? Why not? Aunt Charlotte's attractive, isn't she? Well, sure, but Anderson is an old man. He must be every bit of 35. I know it. Stop me. Well, tell me. Tell me again now what Anderson said to her. I can't remember his exact words. He said he loved her and uh, wanted her to fly with him. <laughs> not even the good man is to have a regular wedding. He wants to elope. What did Aunt Charlotte say? Well, nothing. What could she say? Gee, it must have been embarrassing for her. Jack, we just can't let this awful thing happen. 
Mr. Anderson must be told he can never come here anymore. You leave that to me. I'll tell him and in no uncertain terms. Yes, in no uncertain terms. And you better go in there and tell him right now. You mean now? Of course. Right in front of Aunt Charlotte? Yes. It's high time we all understood each other. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is high time, but... Gee, Bab, what'll I say? Simply tell him Aunt Charlotte doesn't welcome his attention. Doesn't welcome his suit. What's the matter, afraid? What do you mean, afraid? All right, then. Go on in there. Okay, you wait here. Oh, I'll have it memorized in no time at all. Oh, you're mighty sweet, Charlotte. Mr. Anderson. Oh, hello, Jack. Charlotte, I was really worried at first. Mr. Anderson. I figured we'd have to... What do you want, young man? Oh. Hello, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> well, I said hello. Oh, oh you, you did? Jack, is there something you want? Yes, in no uncertain terms. The time has come for me to make a stand in, in no uncertain terms. And to say to you, Mr. Anderson, in, in no uncertain terms... Uh, what are you talking about, Jack? Mr. Anderson's suit. Suit? What's wrong with my suit? The newest thing out. Oh, it's got all the latest wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's high time for no uncertain suit. Uh, uh, high, high terms for, for no uncertain... T- uh, Jack, something is bothering you. It looks to me as if he's been studying too hard. Now, you don't want to overdo it, my boy. <laughs> well, then it's all settled, eh, Charlotte? Mm-hmm. Call for me at 8 o'clock tonight? Tonight? Jack, for goodness sake. Oh, excuse me. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Bad, bad. Quick, tell me what happened. They're getting married. They're getting married at 8.30 tonight. Oh, no. I tell you, they are. Aunt Charlotte's accepted them. Everything's all settled. Then we've got to stop them. We've got to find some way. Judge Cronin. Huh? Judge Cronin. He'll know what to do. Hurry, get him on the phone. Get him on the phone before they come out of the living room. Uh, Lakeview, 0324. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hurry, can't you? Sounds like Mr. Anderson's getting ready to leave. Central's ringing the number. He mustn't let either of them find out we're trying to stop them. Oh, gee, nobody answers. But that's Judge Cronin's office. He must answer. Okay, 12, Charlotte. Oh, Jack. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't know you were talking on the phone. Uh, yes, yes. He, he's talking on the phone. Oh, but not to Judge Cronin. Uh, Cronin? Well, no, he's out of town today. Out of town? Uh Uh-huh. Closed his office and went to a convention or something. Out of town. Jack, are you talking on the phone or to yourself? Oh, oh, I'm on the phone, yeah. Uh, Hello? Oh, Oh, you don't say. You you don't say. You don't say. Uh, Goodbye. Hey, who was that, anyhow? He didn't say. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll, I'll see you this evening, Charlotte. I guess you can get everything you'll need into one suitcase. Easily. Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. Goodbye. And Charlotte, uh, could I, well, speak to you? Hmm? Why, naturally. Yes, we'd both like to speak to you. All right. I'm waiting. Go ahead. And, and Charlotte, Charlotte, uh... Now, look. Why don't both of you go over to Janet Gregory's and straighten this whole thing out? Oh, it isn't Janet Gregory. It's you. And Mr. Anderson. Tonight. <laughs> oh, so that's what you're so excited about. I didn't know you heard. Barbara <laughs> heard. She was in the room when Mr. Anderson asked you. Oh, but Aunt Charlotte, don't you think, uh, wouldn't it be a good idea to put it off for a while? Oh, no, we couldn't do that. No, everybody's been invited. It has to be this evening. Only you haven't time to get ready. Oh, <laughs> I've gotten ready in much less time than this. <laughs> you mean... You mean you've done this before? Oh, dozens of times. <laughs> dozens of times? Only oh, Aunt Charlotte, if, if, well, how could everybody have been invited when, when Mr. Anderson asked you just this morning? Oh, I'm simply taking another woman's place. <laughs> Mr. Anderson... Mr. Anderson's regular girl walked out on him. Walked out on him? Jack, can't you talk without shouting? And you knew... You knew about this other woman? Of course. That doesn't make any difference to me. I consider it all very flattering. (laughs) Flat. Flattering? Oh, Aunt Charlotte, if Mr. Anderson had wanted you, really wanted you, he'd have asked you in the first place. Why don't you give it up? Why don't you forget about it? No, Barbara. Now, Mr. Anderson is a friend of mine. He's had some bad luck, and he's completely depending on me for support. Oh, Oh, Aunt Charlotte. A 
A week from today will be Easter Sunday, symbol of springtime happiness and a deep spiritual joy. Among those who used to celebrate this happy season with their loved ones, many will be separated, lonely this year. And yet for those friends especially and for their families, just a thoughtful Easter message or card can help brighten Easter day. There's still time to select your Easter cards at your Hallmark dealers. Tomorrow, see the fine, tasteful cards appropriate for everyone that you'll want to remember. Your sweetheart, your husband or wife, each member of the family. You can wish Mother a happy Easter with a card as charming as an Easter bonnet. Send a handsome card to Dad. Don't forget how the youngsters will treasure those clever little cutouts. And you'll want to see the many lovely religious cards expressing the traditional spirit and beauty of Easter Tide. You're sure to find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. And remember... A Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now back to our story in the Barton home. It's Saturday evening. Somewhere in the house, a clock is striking eight. And in the hallway, Barbara and Jack are holding a desperate council of war. I tell you, we'll lose her. We'll lose her forever. In less than a half an hour now, she'll be gone. Oh, take it easy, Babs. You could only have gotten to Judge Cronin soon. Well, how could I? He was out of town. It was only by luck that I found out where to reach him at all. Oh, what did you tell him when you talked long distance? I told him everything. He said he'd start back right away, and his train was due 20 minutes ago. Oh, he'll never get here in time, never. He's probably still down at the station waiting for a taxi. I'm going to phone the police. The police? The, the police? Well, they can't help us. I'm going to ask him to send a motorcycle sidecar for us. Give me the police station. But, Barbara, they won't do that. Of course they will. He's a judge, isn't he? Or used to be. And, and this is an emergency. But, Barbara... Hello? Uh, the police station? Uh, this is the Barton residence. We need help. Could you... The door. Oh. Somebody's at the door. Jack, Barbara, will someone answer the doorbell? Quick, quick, hang up. It's Mr. Anderson. I just know it's Mr. Anderson. Wasn't that the door chime? Well, did, did you hear something, Jack? <laughs> hear something? What's the matter with you two children? Of course it was the door chime. Oh, and Charlotte, wait. Uh, opening that door, well, it, it might be dangerous. Dangerous? Well, you might need a burglar face to face. Well, if he's a burglar, he'll have to take that chance. <laughs> uh, hi, Miss Greenwood. Oh, good evening, Junior. Oh. Uh, uh, Mr. Anderson told me to give you this. You look at here. <gasps> Oh, what a lovely corsage. <laughs> oh, white roses, lilies of the valley. Oh, and I do believe orange blossoms. Yeah. Oh. oh, but them orange blossoms ain't so much. No, oh, when I lived in California, I, eh, we raised orange blossoms as big as cabbages. Junior? Yes, yeah, sure. The oranges themselves were the size of a basketball. And say, you should have seen our grapefruit trees. They was about a mile around. Junior? A quarter of a mile thick. Junior? Uh... And two feet high. Oh, that's impossible. What kind of grapefruit could you raise on a tree two feet high? Midget grapefruit. <laughs> Midget? When you stuck a spoon into it, out came a little squirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Junior, there's more to grapefruit that meets the eye. <laughs> oh, meets the eye. <laughs> oh, Shay, are you sharp? You cut me to the cuticle. <laughs> oh, Oh, good evening. Judge Cronin. Judge Cronin. Thank goodness. Oh, come in, Judge. This is a very pleasant surprise. Uh, Miss Greenwood, uh, could I see you alone for a moment, please? Why, yes. Come into the living room. Remember now what I told you. And don't hurt her feelings. We wouldn't have that happen for the world. I'll handle it very carefully. Don't worry. Just leave it to me. Judge Cronin. Uh, yes, yes. I don't want to hurry you, Judge, but I have an engagement to see. Oh, yes, yes, uh, to be sure. Now, uh, look, Miss Greenwood... I regard you as a highly intelligent and competent person. Oh, thank you, Judge Cronin. Uh, however, there are times when everyone needs advice. Mm -hmm. One needs to be told what friends to have, what to do, and uh, uh, where to go. Oh, I have been told that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. In other words, there are occasions when our emotions overrule our senses. Yes. Many of the time, my lips have said yes and my eyes said no. Mm -hmm. My heart said yes and my head said no. Mm -hmm. Have you heard from your feet lately? Not a word. <laughs> Uh, you, you still don't understand. I refer to a time when your 
You're uh, emotionally bewildered. Oh. Do you know what it means when a young lady carries a torch? Certainly. She's a welder. That's right. I didn't know. <laughs> no. I perceive I shall have to be very plain with you, Miss Greenwood. Well, I wish you would, Judge. I really am very busy this evening. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Do you trust my judgment? Well, of course I do. I've always had the greatest respect for you. I uh, see. You, you have? Oh, and the greatest admiration. Oh, <laughs> have you indeed? Well, I've always thought of you as one of my best and very dearest dear friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me some more. Evening, hey, Charlotte. Uh, are you ready to leave? Oh, hello, Charlotte. Oh, is it time to go? Yep, yeah, everything's all set. I have a ticket. Wait, just a moment, just a moment. Uh, there's something There's something I have to read to you, Well, Judge, uh, some other time. We're in an awful hurry. But this is vitally important. It might affect your entire life. I tore it out of the lovelorn column. It's entitled, Is L'Amour Enough? You'd be enough for me. <laughs> Anderson, please. How can you say that? And at a time like this. Well, after all, what has she got that the rest of us haven't? Simply a little more banking on the curve. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, L'Amour, there's that French thing. Love. Infatuation. All right, Carl. And it we says don't here, it says, girl, don't marry the first man you meet. A perfect man doesn't argue. Mm. A perfect man doesn't brag. Mm. A perfect man doesn't criticize. Mm. A perfect man doesn't exist. That's right. Huh? <laughs> Look, Judge, now can we go? Uh, Miss Greenwood, Anderson, please. You're both good friends of mine, and as a friend, I... I beseech, consider this reckless step. Consider this mad marriage. Some other time, Cronin, we... Marriage? Yes. Well, what are you talking about? We're going to the press club. Mr. Anderson and I are in a show. Well, the... A show? The annual press club hijinks. And the curtains at 8.30. Why, the... Jack phoned me and said you were getting married tonight. Jack told you? Yes. Oh, Judge Cronin. Yes. He, he and Barbara are extremely worried about it. And they thought... Yes, it's... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Why, that's what they've been acting so strangely about. Well, that accounts for everything. Well, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you'd better wait for me outside, Mr. Anderson. Huh? Yes. Judge, I think it would be a good idea if you'd leave now. Me? But I don't understand. Oh, well, now, Charlotte, don't take it so seriously. No. It's just a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'd like to see the kids' faces when they find out. Well, it may be a laugh to us, but they'll be humiliated and they'd feel ridiculous. You know, you and I have lived long enough to be able to take a little ridicule, but to children, it's a tragedy. Hmm. Oh, exactly. Miss Greenwood, you're right. Oh, yes, I didn't stop to think about that. Oh, well, I've got to break it to them some way, and it isn't going to be easy. Oh, gee, Dad. <laughs> there, there, darling. Now, it's all over now. Let's forget it. Charlotte, we didn't want to hurt your feelings. Honestly, we didn't. We love you too much for that. Well, you precious lambs. Do I mean that much to you? Of course sure. you do. You know, I'd, I'd rather hear that from you children than from anybody else in the whole world. We were afraid we were going to lose you. <laughs> How could anybody lose a telephone pole? <laughs> <laughs> we made such fools of ourselves. Well, in the course of a lifetime, you're entitled to a few errors. Nobody ever bats a thousand. It's just a little mistake, that's all. But we're always making little mistakes. Well, they're the most valuable experience we can have. The little mistakes teach us how to avoid the big ones. I'll never forgive myself. Ah, the only time a mistake is unforgivable, Barbara, is when we refuse to learn something by it. Well, I don't know what we've learned by this, except we're just a, just a couple of droops. Oh, I don't know, Jack. Now, you might have learned that something isn't necessarily true just because you believe it. Huh? The other fellow might have his side of the story, too. Especially if the other fellow's name is uh, Janet Gregory. Well, what's Janet Gregory got to do with... Oh. Oh, you mean that story about her going to the movies with Well, her. you see how easy it is for you to be wrong. Oh, Jack. And that letter I helped you write. Yeah. Oh, all we do is get into trouble. Hey. Hey. I forgot to mail that letter. With all this, this other thing, I just slipped my mind. I'm getting my hat and coat. Well, you're not going to mail it, are you? No, sir. I'm going over and see Janet. Oh, wait, wait. I'll go with you. Well, I found out something. They love me. 
Evening, ma'am. I'm Officer Marvin of the Radio Car Patrol. This is the Barton home. Yes, that's right. Okay, Terry. Okay. We think we got the man who tried to flirt with you. What, after all these years? <laughs> let go of me. I'm a respectable, law-abiding citizen. Now, you let go of me. Who do you think you are? Mr. Anderson, what on earth have you been doing? What have I been doing? He was walking up and down and shouting, Ah, my love, arise, arise, the crimson dawn is in the sky. Well, that's the thing yes, I... Yes, dawn, mind you. And here it is barely evening. He doesn't even know what time it is. <laughs> they told me you phoned the police and said you needed help. Oh, no, I didn't phone the police. Well, there uh, must be some sort of a mix-up, Terry. I'll say there's a mix-up. I am William Anderson. William Anderson, mind you. Managing editor of the Lakeview Dispatch. And this is Charlotte Greenwood. Oh, Say, I, I hope I haven't bothered you, Mrs. Greenwood. Oh, not at all. But just to clear up the mix-up, it isn't Mrs. Greenwood, it's Miss Greenwood. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks just the same. You're entirely welcome, Miss Greenwood. Come on, Terry. Oh, How do you like that? Trying to arrest me because I'm going to take a part in the play. Because I'm going to act. They should know better. You can't arrest a man for a crime until after he's committed it. That's right. It's a hand. Come on, the show must be Greenwood will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, I want to remind you again, the next time you buy a card for any occasion, look on the back for the identifying words, a Hallmark card. H-A-L-L-M-A-R-K. A Hallmark card. Like sterling on silver, those three words are your assurance of finest quality. They tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Yes, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And now, Charlotte Greenwood. Friends, if humanity has a common heart, that heart is the Red Cross. Because here is the sum total of all human compassion. Here, in its fullest measure, is the infant sympathy and understanding that each of us has. So a contribution to the Red Cross is more than a gift. It's a vital provision for our very own. That money which you've been promising yourself you were going to give, give to the Red Cross now. <laughs> and now, until next Sunday, at the very same time, this is Charlotte Greenwood saying, So long, friends, Till next Sunday, I'll just say, oh, so long, so long. Charlotte Greenwood Show, written by Jack Hasty and D.H. Johnson, with John Brown, Charles Cantor, and Edward Ryan, who appears with the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, came to you from Hollywood. This is Wendell Niles speaking. This is the Blue Network of the American Broadcasting Company.